Okay, so the translation. By the Vanguard Shula AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Shula Prabhupada Shula Prabhupada Ki Jai. The holy name, character, pastimes, and activities of Krishna are all transcendentally sweet like sugar candy. Although the tongue of one afflicted by the jauntice of, advit of avidya, ignorance, cannot taste anything sweet, it is wonderful that simply by carefully chanting these sweet names every day, a natural relish awakens within his tongue and his disease is gradually destroyed at the root. Please repeat after me, the holy name, character, pastimes, holy name, character, pastimes. And, activities of and activities of Krishna are all transcendentally sweet like sugar candy. <clears throat> Although the tongue of one, afflicted by the jaundice, of avidya ignorance, cannot taste anything sweet. It is wonderful that simply by carefully chanting these sweet names every day, a natural relish awakens within his tongue and his disease is gradually destroyed at the root. Okay, just very quickly say Mangla Chand and begin. Omegiana to Miranda Siaki Nanjana Shilakaya, Jekshu Militami Natas Mai Shri Gurve Namaha, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Shri Advaita Gadada Shivasiddhi, Gaura Bhakta Vinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So again, begging for the blessings of Chandrawali Maharaj and the Vaishnavas so we can speak something on this wonderful verse. <laughs> so this is interesting. Here, Rupa Goswami is glorifying the holy names. He actually is glorifying the name, the character, pastimes and activities of Krishna. He is explaining the status of everything that is related to Krishna, all transcendentally sweet like sugar candy. And then he's also explaining that those in a diseased condition don't get or would not taste the real nature of Krishna consciousness. But then beyond that, he's explaining how one can reform the diseased condition in order to fully taste, uh, as they say, the nectar for which we are always anxious. So, the first question that can come when someone looks at this, even if for a practicing devotee, is, well, if the holy name, if Krishna's name, character, pastimes, activities are naturally sweet, right? then when we practice, why don't we feel the sweetness? Hmm? What is this specific point about the disease condition? A similar question can be asked about Krishna consciousness in general. If Krishna consciousness is so natural, why in many cases will it feel unnatural when people begin? <clears throat> How does that happen? So our situation is like someone who is drowning. Right? Has anyone ever been underwater and struggling? You ever had that experience? You know, for whatever reason, even if you're a good swimmer, something happens and you're underwater and you're, at, you're struggling to come up for air. So imagine that someone is drowning. They're actually drowning. They're underwater. They're struggling to come up for air. They're submerged. Someone pulls them out of the water and puts them on land. How will their breathing be initially? Someone is drowning and you've just pulled them out of the, of the water. How is their breathing initially? Sorry? Heavy, yep. Unnatural, right? But we know at the same time that breathing is natural, isn't it? Every single person in this room is breathing, right? What that means is when you take someone out of an unnatural position, the natural thing first feels artificial. Hmm? When the individual returns back to their normal condition, then the natural thing actually feels natural. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in Krishna consciousness, we've just been pulled out of the material world 
in a sense. But at least we've been thrown the rope. Huh? We've been drowning in this ocean of material existence. Prabhupada has come, as he is explaining this purport, he's sending people all around this world. The Sankirtan mission is to reclaim the fallen conditioned souls. Hmm? Prabhupada is predicted as the mantra Upasaka. In Bhakti Notarko's writing in the literature called the Sajna Tushanti, he predicts that there will, this, there will be this person who will come, the mantra Upasaka, the commander in chief of Lord Chaitanya's own army, who will come like a bounty hunter around the world and reclaim souls huh, on behalf of Krishna. So when we're first pulled out, of this gross material situation, the natural thing will feel unnatural. Hmm? But that's is explaining here by taking the natural thing in the appropriate way. Interesting, the specific word is used. Simply, see, look, just notice the wording is used. Simply by carefully chanting. Right? It's simple and at the same time. It's got to be done a specific way. Simply by carefully chanting these sweet names every day, a natural relish awakens within his tongue and his disease is gradually destroyed at the root. Now bear in mind here this term, destroyed at the root. Because when we looked at the first verse, when Prabhupada was speaking about prayaschita, atonement, he mentioned how the weakness is the root issue isn't addressed. Now the contrast is in this verse, it says specifically the issue is addressed at the root. So the contrast is between the material activities which are superficial and don't deal with the ultimate issue. Then the spiritual activities which actually go in at the very deepest level huh? to reawaken the natural constitutional position of the living entity. Everything unnatural is an enemy. Hmm? So we are suffering because we are in this unnatural disease condition. Disease. Huh? What is a disease? This world is kunta. Anxiety. Huh? The place of anxiety. And our home is vaikunta. Huh? the place which is eternally free of anxiety. So when you put someone in a situation that is completely unnatural for them, they're going to be disturbed. Hmm? And that is actually our position. At the same time, we know that this holy name is auspicious. Why? Golokera Premadana Harinam Sankirtan. This holy name is actually coming directly from the spiritual world, from the spiritual platform. There's a devotee I know in London, <clears throat> and he was doing Sankirtan, and he had given, he was distributing books, he gave a book to one young man, one young English man. And because the English man was interested and they were conversing, so he told him more, he said, you should try this chanting. Try this mantra and just see what, what you find. And so one morning I was going to the manor, a temple in London, and I saw that book distributor, he's a friend of mine. He showed me a text. Because right? he'd, he'd kept in touch with this young man who he'd given the book to and who he'd given the Maha Mantra to. This young man had written to him, I think a day or two after he'd given him the mantra. And he said to him, he said, I'm chanting this mantra that you've given me. He said, when I'm chanting this mantra, sometimes I'm laughing and sometimes I'm crying. He said, what is this mantra that you've given me? <laughs> yeah, serious. That's... Devoli told me that directly. He'd given the mantra a few days later, that person, the new person, just started to try the chanting. And sometimes I'm crying, sometimes I'm laughing. What, what is this mantra that you've given me? What is happening to me? Hmm? This, is, this is the Maha Mantra. Maha Mantra. The great mantra for deliverance in this particular age, the Prabhupada says. Huh? And because the name is non different than the actual Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself, therefore, this mantra is our association with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
Hmm? So we say Nam Ras. Huh? There's a relationship that one has with the name. Sri Nam, Hari Nam Prabhu. That name, huh? that name is alive. Huh? That name is alive. Krishna has come in this age. Kali Kali Nama Rupe Krishna Avatar. He's incarnated, he's present exactly in the form of his holy name. That holy name is the Supreme Personality of God, the Krishna. And by chanting it, we're going to change. It's interesting. If you are in an insane asylum, right, with other people who are insane, they may think there's something wrong with you. Right? A sane individual in an insane asylum full of crazy people, they will turn around and they'll even think that you're crazy. Hmm? So when you have a society which en masse is in a diseased condition, the disease is what this material conditioning, uh, and this ahankara, ahankara vimudatma kata hamiti manyate, uh, we think we're the doer, we think we're this mind, we're this body, hmm? and therefore everyone in the material world struggles so much. Uh, Mamai Vamso Jiva Loke Jiva Bhutta Sanatana Mana Shishtani Indriani Prakriti Shtani Kashati. We're Kashati. We're struggling with Mana Shishtani Indriani. Mana means the mind, Shishtani means six, Indriani means the senses. Uh, the body, the mind, the senses were struggling. Uh, so you put a sane individual in an insane asylum. And the people in the asylum will think that this sane individual is crazy. They'll think they're okay, and the person who is actually sane, they'll think that person is crazy. So, it's actually very interesting. Sri Prabhupada comes, and he sees the condition of the living entities here, and he wants to restore them to their normal condition. And this process is the process by which we become sane again. Huh? There's a story of a king who had a huge kingdom. And the king, near his castle, he, actually within his castle, he had his own private spring of water, his own private well. But the villagers in the kingdom, they would use the village wells. One day the village wells became contaminated. So anyone who would drink from the village wells, they became crazy. They became insane. And so, after a while, all the villagers started to have questions about the king. That our king, he seems crazy. There's something wrong with this individual, like that. And the king was wondering what was happening to the villagers, because they seemed to be behaving differently. So one day the king came down from his castle and went around his lands to see the villagers. And at one point he became thirsty, so he drank from the, um, the village well. And that evening, all the villagers rejoiced that the king had regained his sanity. You understand the point? Hmm? This is also linking what we discussed yesterday. Yeah. You got it. It came slowly. It was delayed, but we got there eventually. So... This is what we mean by the, being careful about association. It is an objective fact that to live your entire life just for material pursuits is objectively insane. It's not just a question of opinion. It is objectively insane. Right? Even some of the most intelligent materialists have been existential philosophers. And many of them committed suicide when they examined the nature of this world. That it's crazy to spend your whole life striving to achieve something that you may not even get and that will definitely leave you when you die. Right? So you're striving for something that you may not get, that you have to work very hard to achieve. People will be envious of you if you do get it and you may not get any of it. Hmm? So it's absurd in all this endeavor for something you may not get. And at the same time, it's absurd to just live, or it's absurd to die not knowing where you're going. Hmm? 
Yeah? Absurd to live, absurd to die. Some of them went crazy. Material existence is absurd. It is absurd. Even to the point that people get what they're looking for and they're still miserable. Hmm? And they're often the most envious people. Because they strived for it, they didn't get it, or they got it, it was exactly the opposite of what they were looking for. There was more trouble than the entire endeavor. And they're frustrated and upset that they wasted their entire life going for these things. There was one famous Hollywood star, he said that he wishes that every single person in the world could have worldwide fame and millions of, of, um, of dollars in wealth just so that they could understand that it's not what they're looking for. Isn't that interesting? Yeah? Just so they could understand that it's not what they're looking for. Hmm? So this is our disease. The disease is so deep that the disease is our illusion about everything. The illusion is about everything including ourselves. Hmm? But this is also the solution. The Maha Mantra is the solution. Although the holy name is non different from Krishna, the holy name in another sense is even more merciful. Nam is more merciful than Nami. Huh? Because at any point in time, anyone, anywhere in the world, just by chanting that name Krishna, they can associate with the Supreme Personality of Godhead and receive the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <coughs> Furthermore, that holy name can be given to others. So this is what the devotees do. What is a devotee? A devotee is someone who interferes in the material karma of others. Hmm? The Harinam Sankirtan movement is an intervention in the material history of humanity. Hmm? When someone chants the holy name, and when anyone hears, in fact, even just the fact that the holy name is chanted in any environment, it changes the karma of that environment. It changes the history of that particular society, that nation, the world. Hmm? So it's an intervention. It is the most auspicious intervention in any individual or society's life. Huh? And the moment someone comes in touch with the holy name, that is the beginning of the end. Hmm? It is the beginning of the end of their material existence. Hmm? Now, however, even though that is the case, we then go further because we want to accelerate the beginning of the end. And when you want to accelerate the beginning of the end, that means you become a devotee. Hmm? What do I mean? Many people in this world, through previous activities, they have, they have accrued some what's called Agyata Sukriti. They have accrued some spiritual credit. When the spiritual credit builds up to a significant level, they get the association of Vaishnavas and they have the intelligence and the, and the sense to consciously engage in this devotional process. There are practically millions of living entities on this planet right now who have the credit to become devotees, who have the, um, the spiritual mercy to be awakened to become members of Lord Chaitanya's movement. Huh? And our job as devotees, it is a great mission, is to rack our brains to find different means and ends, different ways to bring people back to the healthy condition. Prabhupada gives the example. He says, and this is just contrasting spiritual or transcendental activities with mundane activities. He says, you meet some homeless person, right? they're struggling, they've got no food, no shelter, no money, they're diseased. What do you do for them? You can give them a few pennies. But if you look very carefully and you understand that that person, hold on, I've seen you before. Aren't you the son of the millionaire? Huh? That person is actually the son of a millionaire. So rather than, it is in one sense an insult to give that person a few coins. It's so superficial. 
if you can persuade that person to return home, everything is taken care of. Hmm? Everything is taken care of. Now, there's two levels of this. There is the point of taking someone from the gross external situation to persuade them, return back home, back to Krishna, engage in Krishna consciousness, everything is taken care of. Right? That's getting them in the door. But now that they're in the door, there's still a deeper level of refinement. Because we have to take it very deeply to the point that Marge said yesterday, that we give our entire life. Surrender is a function of faith. If you have deep faith in Krishna, the symptom of deep faith is deep surrender. Hmm? The symptom, when your faith is so deep, when your trust is complete, that actually this person, if I give my life to him, he will, everything will be taken care of. Then there is this deep surrender. Hmm? But at the same time, Lord Chaitanya, Namo Mahava Nyaya Krishna Premapadayate Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Namni Gora Tvashena Maha Because he's possessed the mood of, Mad, of Radharani, his mood, the contrast between him and Lord Krishna is that Krishna says, Sava Dharma Parichaya, you surrender first. Then we'll talk about love of God. Lord Chaitanya says, he, well, Rupa Goswami is glorifying Lord Chaitanya because he's giving everything. He's giving Krishna Premapadayate, love of God, to everyone, qualified, unqualified, makes no difference. Hmm? In fact, in Kali Yuga, our qualification is our disqualification. Hmm? The more we recognize our fallen condition, the more we will cry for Krishna. Hmm? And when you cry for Krishna, Krishna is there. Hmm? The wonderful point that Maharaj was making before with, um, regarding Draupadi. <coughs> when she still tried to hold her sari, to stop herself being disrobed. She was calling to Krishna. But because she was still also trying to manage the situation herself, I think Marjorie said Krishna was playing chess with Rukmini. Is that correct? Like, he was playing chess with Rukmini. Rukmini realized, oh, drop your devotee is calling. A little bit of a technical. But. Hare Krishna? I think we're okay. So, Rukmini understood that Krishna, your devotee, is calling you. And Krishna said, let's play another game. Mm -hmm. But when Draupadi fully surrendered, the Lord fully protected, he fully gave shelter. In this purple, Prabhupada uses a very wonderful term. He says, he, this word, he says, Maya, he said, this world of Maya is called the Ras. Durasraya, which means false or bad shelter. Hmm? Our trouble is that due to ignorance, avidya, we're taking shelter of the wrong thing. Hmm? There's um, some kind of game, and um, it's about one character, and the, the tagline in the game is, um, it says, looking for love in all the wrong places. Hmm? And that's our situation in the material world. Looking for shelter, looking for the natural dormant love to be reciprocated with fully, but looking for it in a place which is a bad shelter. The material energy doesn't give you shelter. The material energy gives you trouble. Hmm? And the material energy is trying to bring everyone ultimately to understand Jivara Shrupoya Krishnera Nitya Das. Hmm? When someone is introspective and they suffer, at some point they ask themselves the question, why am I suffering? Huh? Why am I suffering? Who am I? Huh? What is the purpose of life? Again, because this world is insane, people think that the whole purpose of life is just to be born, you know, go to school, get a job and die. I mean, think about that, really. The, you're, the conception that the entire cosmic manifestation is there so you could be born and get a job and die. I mean, isn't it? It's, it's absurd. Yeah. yeah. Get a good job, yeah, like that, you know. After struggling very hard, yeah. And then die. And that's considered a successful life. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. And people don't even know how to die healthy now, even. So it's objectively absurd. But you can see how, how strong Maya is, because there are millions of people on this planet who, even though it's objectively absurd, they will stand there and, and with conviction talk nonsense. Hmm? This idea that you're the body is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. The idea of living as if no one's going to die is crazy. We're seeing people die all the time. And everyone is living, is acting as if they are going to live forever. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. If you tell people that actually, why don't we try to live a life where we will be eternally happy? Huh? They, will, they will look at you as if you're mad. It's completely the wrong way around. Just like Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, you know, that which sees, um, what is it? Nessian says, you know, that which confuses religion and irreligion. Right? That type of noise. So it's actually a, a world view in the mode of ignorance. Steeped in the mode of ignorance. 